So today we're going to be doing five different tips in WordPress. We are going to be starting at the beginner level and we're going to crank it up to 11. So if you think you've seen everything about WordPress, stick around because you might just learn something. Coming in at number five has to be detoxing and optimizing your database of your website. Now I'm going to show you how to do this and we're going to be using a plugin called WP Sweep. Okay, so in order to optimize your database of your website, we're going to need to install WP Sweep. So we just head over to plugins and we're going to say add new. In the add plugin screen on the top right is the search bar. And then in the search bar, we're going to put in WP Sweep. In the search results, it's this very first one over here that we're looking for. We're going to click on install now. And once it's installed, we're going to click activate. Okay, so now that the plugin has been activated, in order to access it, we head over to tools on the left hand side menu and you go down until you see sweep and you click that. Now this is an example website that I have made for this video, but in your website, there's gonna be a lot more stuff that's going to be populated inside this menu. In order to actually optimize your database, you just scroll down right to the bottom and then you say sweep all. Once it's done sweeping, you'll see all these different options now actually be disappeared so that you know that it's actually been sweeped and optimized. Now this is definitely gonna speed up your website, especially if you haven't optimized the database in a very long time. All transients and maybe too many revisions really do weigh down your website. So it's good to just to clean this all out to make sure it's the most optimal version that can be for your website. Coming in at number four definitely is for the people who are getting a little bit tired of using Elementor. Some people are starting to notice that it's getting a little bit too bloated. That, and when you're using the editor, there's a lot of ads that are popping up in your face trying to upsell you of other products of theirs. So if you want to try something new, let me introduce you to Stackable. And what Stackable does is it's not its own page builder. It already takes the built-in Gutenberg editor of WordPress, and it really adds a lot of features that quite resemble how Elementor works. So I'm gonna go and quickly show you what Stackables is about. So here in the back end of our WordPress website, we are gonna be installing the Stackables plugin. So in order to do that, we're going to plugins and we're gonna say add new. In the top search box on the right hand side, we're gonna type out Stackables. Here in the search results, this is the first one we're looking for, the Stackable over here. We're gonna click on install now. And once it's installed, we're gonna click activate. Okay, now that Stackables has been installed and activated, let's go over to a post. I'm gonna show you how this thing works. Here's an example post that I just opened up quickly. The title, I'm just going to say example post. If you head over to the top left hand side, you can see there's a little plus icon. If you click that, you can see that now that Stackables has a whole bunch of different widgets available for you to use, just like Elementor. So have a look through all these different ones. There's a whole bunch of really interesting and cool things, and it really opens up the design possibilities. But I'm going to show you the differences right over here, just in the headings alone. So I'm going to get the Stackable heading, and I'm going to get a standard heading, and you'll be able to see all the different things that you'll be able to do using the new Stackables one. So here's the two heading widgets. The first one is a normal one that Gutenberg has, and the second one is that Stackables one I just mentioned. Now if I click on this normal heading, on the right hand side you can see that these are the normal type of options that you have available. It isn't that much that you normally are used to using Elementor. But now if I go and click on the Stackables heading, you can see on the right hand side that now there's a whole bunch of different types of options that you have available. So do try this out because you might just enjoy using it and again, it's using it on the Gutenberg editor, so there's no added bloats of extra page builders. Coming in at number three on this list is beefing up the security of your website. Now I'm gonna show you how to do that using two-factor authentication for your login. It's very easy and quick to do. We are gonna be using the plugin called WordFence. Don't worry, it is free. So let's jump in and show you how to do that. So here in the back end of our WordPress website, we have to install WordFence before we enable the two-factor authentication. So in order to install it, we're gonna go into plugins, we're gonna say add new. Here in the add plugin screen, we're gonna click on this top right search box over here and we're gonna say WordFence. In the search results, this very first one over here is the one that we're looking for. We're gonna click on install now. And once it's installed, we're gonna click activate. Now that we've activated the WordFence plugin, it is going to ask us to go and get a license. And so we have to click on this button that says get your WordFence license. Once we click this button, a browser tab is gonna open up and then we're gonna select our packages. So let's just do that now. Over here, what we're looking for is the free version, which is say get a free license. In this new pop-up, I'm gonna say I'm okay waiting 30 days. And then we're gonna fill in our email address to where they're gonna send the license to. Now that you've put in your email address and you've clicked register at the bottom, this is the screen you're gonna see that's gonna be processing your request now that's finished processing wordfence is going to send us a mail and in that mail we're going to carry on with the next steps of installing the license so here's that mail that i was talking about over here you can see there's this button that says install my license automatically if it doesn't work you're going to have to put in this license key at the bottom over here manually which is pretty easy to do but here in this example all i'm going to do is install my license automatically now that the license has been populated inside our wordpress website 
Last thing you have to do is say install license. Okay, so now that WordFence has been installed, what we're going to be looking for is this login security tab that's in the left hand side menu. We're going to click on that. So in the two factor authentication screen, here's the QR code that you're going to be using in the Google Authenticator. It's really handy having the Authenticator on your phone because at Google Authenticator, you can just open it up. And at the bottom, you'll see a plus sign and it says the QR code scanner, which will open up your camera and then you just scan this QR code and then it'll do everything automatically for you. Once the QR code has been processed, then it's going to give you a confirmation code for your website. That confirmation code, you're going to enter it right over here in this box over here and then you're going to click on activate. Once that's done, then every time you log into your WordPress backend, it's going to ask you for the authentication code. That way, no hacker is going to break into your website very easily because you already have two-factor authentication enabled. Okay, coming in at number two on this list has to be the SEO of your website. Now, a lot of plugins like Yoast or Rank Math only create a general type of sitemap for you to use to submit to Google in the search console. This is not the optimal way of doing things. A lot of SEO marketers won't tell you that Google has a crawl budget for every website that is submitted to them. Now, you want to optimize that crawl budget. So I'm going to show you what to submit into the Google Console instead of the whole general sitemap that Yoast and Rank Math and all these other plugins just provide for you. Okay, so this whole sitemap SEO thing is actually pretty cool. Now I'm using Yoast SEO in this example. So in order to get to the sitemaps in Yoast, we are going to hover over Yoast and we're going to look for settings. Here in the settings screen, we just have to scroll right down to the bottom until you see this one that says XML sitemaps. Now in the sitemap box, you can see there is view XML sitemap. So if we click on that, you can see that this is the entire sitemap that they're going to submit to, to Google. It's not the most efficient one, because if you look, this is made up of other mini sitemaps. There's one strictly for the posts, pages, categories, authors, and if you have products, if you have products or some other types of plugins, this starts getting very long. And it's a whole bunch of things that you don't need to submit to Google. So the ones that you are looking out for, for most businesses, is definitely this very first one that says post sitemap, and the second one that says page sitemap. Now there are others that you might want to include depending on your business, like products, that sort of thing. But generally you don't want the author or category of a website because it doesn't really help in search rankings. People who use Google are generally looking for something very specific and not like a broad based item. So if you really want to maximize your crawl budget of your website, I suggest that you copy out the sitemaps that you want Google to index and then just leave the others out. So you don't have to submit the main sitemap because it's just inefficient. Okay, coming in at number one on this list has to be the WordPress secret admin menu. Now, this is not accessible through the normal back end of WordPress. Now, this is not a very big and extensive menu that is hidden from you, but this is a perfect tool that you might need if your database ever gets corrupted and damaged and you really need to repair it or optimize it. Now, WordPress already has these type of functionality built in. I'm going to show you where to find it and how to use it. Now, the secret admin menu. Now, in the back end of your WordPress website, there's no way to access it. Believe me, there's nothing under tools, there's nothing under settings or anything else like that. You have to go into your URL and add the following piece of text to it. Now, that text is forward slash maint forward slash repair dot PHP. Here's an example on the screen of how that actually looks like as a full URL. But once you put that in, it's going to take you to a very specific place of your WordPress installation. So let me go show you that now. Okay, once you've entered that URL, this is the screen you're going to be presented with. Now, what WordPress is asking you here is to add this line of code right over here into the config.php file of your WordPress installation. I didn't tell you about this before because I wanted to show you that WordPress itself is asking you to do this and not some random guy on the internet. Now, to add this to your config.php file is really easy. All you do is you copy this code right over here. Then all you have to do is head over to the hosting of your website and log into the cPanel there. And then I'm going to show you how to insert it. Okay, so here in your cPanel, what you have to do is you go into your public HTML folder. Over here, you look down until you find the WP config file. You right click on that and you say edit. And then it's going to give you this pop up. What I'm looking for is this edit button over here. I'm going to click that. And now you can actually add that code into this file. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down right to the bottom of this file. Right in this bottom line, all I'm going to do is I'm going to press enter to make a new line. Do remember to put this on a blank new line. And then I'm just going to copy that code and then I'm going to save changes. Okay, so now that we're back on this screen, all you have to do over here is just refresh this and then you're going to see that menu appear. Now that we've refreshed, now you can see that this is the WordPress menu that I was talking about. So the first option is to repair the database 
And the second one is to repair and optimize. Now this is a really cool feature to remember because there is sometimes that your database does get corrupted and it's great that WordPress already has tools built in that you can actually use to fix the database. Okay, so those were the five tips. Now if you stuck around, I've got a bonus one for you. Did you know that WordPress has a whole bunch of different keyboard shortcuts that you can use while creating your posts or pages? Well, I'm going to show you that. And I'm going to show you a little pop-up menu that'll give all the list of different shortcuts that you can use while creating a blog post or page. Okay, so keyboard shortcuts is a really great time saver, especially when you're building out a lot of pages or posts. So I'm going to head over to posts and let's show you exactly how this works. So over here, I'm just using the Hello World example post that WordPress normally installs for you. To give you an example of how keyboard shortcuts works, so if you press Ctrl and S on your keyboard, this will save whatever edits you have done to this post. And now this works on pages as well. There are other couple of places that this does work, but here in this example, I'm just sticking to posts. So now if I go ahead and actually press Ctrl and S, then you can see that it's saving on the top right hand side and you can see that it was updated. If you want to see all the different shortcuts that WordPress has available for you, all you have to do is press Alt, Shift, and H. And this new pop-up will appear and it'll give you a list of all the different shortcuts that you can use that will really speed up your development time while working inside WordPress. This is a really cool thing to know. And truth be told, this is something that I actually learned very recently and I've been doing websites for a long time. I hope you liked this video. If you have any other really unknown tips, put a comment down below and let's go see what they are. Don't forget to like and subscribe because that stuff helps my channel a lot. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.